Hey ladies, welcome back to the podcast. Well, something I haven't talked a lot about on this podcast and I feel like I should be talking a lot about is the fitness piece of weight loss and the fitness piece of going through a hormonal transition and how does that fitness now need to look? Because your body's changing, which means your fitness could be changing, just like your diet has to change as well when you go through this time period. Well, my guest today is just, he is that guy that's going to tell us about exactly what we should be doing as far as the fitness goes as we make our way through this kind of perimenopause, menopause transition. He is Joe Oniwar. He is a, did I say that right, Joe? Oniwar. Oniwar. I was close. Yeah, yeah you were really close. <laughs> if you wouldn't have asked, it would have went right through. I, I know, I shouldn't know. I shouldn't know. <laughs> So Joe here is a personal transformation coach and certified personal trainer and fitness nutrition specialist. Joe is a former college athlete and pro arena football player and has been in the fitness industry for 28 years. He developed the jock method and began working exclusively with women over 40, providing them with body transformation coaching needed to overcome the massive energy loss and weight gains associated with menopause. At its core, the Jock Mission is all about love. The Jock Method is a combination of nutrition advice, fitness training, and life coaching for a positive mind. This custom-tailored approach empowers women over 40 to enjoy the best years of their lives, feeling stronger, fitter, and more beautiful, both inside and out. So welcome, Joe, to the podcast. I am so grateful to be here. Thank you for having me. So I'm also a transformational nutrition coach, just so you know. <laughs> We're both in the I've, in the biz. I've of listened to you. <laughs> We're both in the biz of transforming women, which is pretty yes. cool, and both with the same target audience, which is women that are going through this hormonal shift. So, looking at you, Joe. I mean, for those of you that are listening on a podcast, just head to the YouTube channel and take a look at Joe here. Joe, you don't look like the kind of guy that <laughs> is going to be the personal trainer. <laughs> For menopausal women, which I'm really happy you are. You're a good looking guy. I'm happy to have you here. But how in the world did you go from being this football player, personal trainer to working with women over, you know, into their 40s, 50s and beyond? So uh, the journey of actual, you know, in the training aspect, it really took me through because one of the things that I, I'm so passionate about um, from being an athlete is effort is the best way to put it. So I love what happens when, you know, the human spirit, the human will engages in the activity and you see, you know, the championship hand raised or whatever that is, but really challenging that potential. And so um, I am a passionate group fitness instructor. Um, I was an instructor for Orange Theory for some time and really had a lot of fun there. Um, and so what happened was as I was working with women, um, and at, at that point, all athletes, um, I had a few women who were over 40, but I started to see every day coming in and out of class with these women with amazing effort, they fell right into the conversation we're having today. You know, really that 40 and above, I'm 48 now and at Perry, post-menopause giving great effort and they'd always be asking me, you know, what should I be doing? It's not working, I'm not seeing results. Um, and so that's what led me because I was so inspired by their effort, the inner athlete, the superwoman. Um, you'll hear them reference when I speak of them that was inside of them that it inspired me to start to have a deeper question because I had achieved results um, throughout my career with the athletes I work with that came from that demographic, but it really um, four years ago said it made me say this is something I want to specialize in um, and become an expert and two on the secondary my mom never found that answer. So growing up I watched my mom go fad diet after fad diet and always looking and searching for something and whatever was on the national Enquirer at that time at the grocery store became our new way of eating. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, um, so I was really inspired by that on the other piece, because as, as I began to focus and narrow my target, my mom, I felt like she never found, she'd come back and after she had trainers, there was nobody who invested almost that extra step um, to make sure she was, and she, we, we, it was a very interesting household. I'm from, you know, Los Angeles, California. So it was a lot of things going on in my life. Um, 
And so it was just like, she never found that coach, that trainer that took the extra step that kept her inspired till she found her way. Um, and so I wanted to be that as well. I wanted to have an answer that would have been. So as I build programs, I'm always thinking, that could I be the answer if my mom was searching that she found today? And that's what empowered my heart to drive uh, my passion. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. And I forgot, I actually, when I was researching you, uh, when you first reached out to me, I did see that you were a big part of the Orange Theory industry. And the woman that, I'm not going to remember her name, but the woman that created it, I actually watched her speak at a Tony Robbins business conference and it was, she was super inspiring and it actually really got me thinking like, wow, this orange theory, like where it comes from is pretty cool and very motivational. So I could just imagine how you are in a group class. Like I could just, I could just see you <laughs> in those orange theory classes, inspiring everybody. But yeah, that's what, that's really cool. And, you know, talking about this transition that women go through and why we have to look at this differently. And unfortunately, when you look in society right now, we're looked down upon as women go through this transition, they fight it tooth and nail. They, they, they feel less, less of a person because they're going through this hormonal shift, which oftentimes does come with weight gain, comes with fatigue, like you talk about these changes and they, they get angry and they really try and push back. And it's really not the approach to be had, is it? I, it's a approach, but I, I definitely feel that there is, um, there's a powerful, there's powerful options that um, really will put you in a position and, and you know, always bringing in uh, the medical professionals um, because my expertise is movement um, with nutrition and mindfulness, but having that expertise, and I know you speak a lot about, you know, what's happening at that hormonal level um, and consulting with your doctor. But once we get that, um, you know, caveat in place, there's a lot of things and an approach and it was awesome because in my journey from being an elite athlete and working with elite athletes from you know youth all the way up to Olympic level, I started to see a mirror of what I would be focusing on on this side with my athletes that was starting to be exactly what the women needed on this side. Really? Um, and so it was really fun to start to um, investigate and work with and you know really um, narrow down these different uh, metrics we need to focus on to create the results. And it's, it's been great. We've had a lot of fantastic results. And I can't say enough how many of those different symptoms that come with the transition and the fluctuation we've been able to diminish or eliminate um, within the ladies with putting these into place and having, of course, the doctors in place to wow. um, second that professional background. So tell me how it's approached differently. Like, you know, why is a woman what what's different about her physique and what's going on inside that you you know what do you do differently than how you would train the average cycling woman let's say so i think uh in when we start with well, many different things um it starts with and this is a conversation that could go who knows how far back it'll go in her story um but it starts with the at this point everything like my athletes that I used to train um, for sports, my super women athletes that I work with at this point, you have to become the star of your game. And uh, the, a better way to put it is you have to become first, you know, when you look at an athlete who's getting ready to go, you know, whether it's college or anything they're preparing for, that's the forefront of their brain, their family knows it, everyone knows all of this, um, and how important it is because maybe their career or their dreams on the line, the same way because of the fluctuation of the hormones and what's that's doing to the body, it becomes a even greater necessity to be the priority and be that first thing that whether it's you're making sure you get your workout in or your nourishment or whatever it is. So that's the very first thing. When you step in, it's like, I actually tell the superwoman, you lose your name here. You're not mom, you're not grandma, you're not sister, you're not anybody. You're Kathy, you're Karen. This is who you are and this is who I coach. And so that's the only one I want to talk to. I don't want to have mom's excuses or grandma. You get to be first for this hour we're together because that's what it's going to take for us to get the most out of your body. Um, and ultimately, it's probably going to fold un or unfold everywhere in your life at this point. Wow. So I think that's the number one thing is to start with the mindset, same way you will with an athlete. 
Mm -hmm. I always say when women are going through this transition that you can fight it or you can work with it and take out the positive, which the positive I see time and time again is it's a time in a woman's life where suddenly, you know, her kids are older, they may not need her as much that, you know, she's come to a place in her life where, you know, the relationship is you've either gotten rid of the guy or you've decided to keep him. You know, like there's, like you said, you, it suddenly, it is a time where women for the first time in a very long time can say, what do I want in my life? You know, what's going to come for me? What do, where do I want to go? And this is exactly what you're talking about here, but on the, fit, on the fitness realm too, like where you're saying, okay, I'm going to put myself first actually, and start doing this and work out differently maybe than you had before, which is, you know, combining that mindset with the fitness, which is just, it's amazing. I think that that's so important. Now, do you, actually train women differently because they're in a different hormonal profile? So in, in terms of the approach in the jock method, so when we look at the breakdown of what do we want to do here? Okay, what is our, what is our goal? So the, the main overriding, overriding goal is we want to maintain the muscle mass, um, which is going to boost the metabolism, which is going to, unless it may not be maintain and maybe build or enhance the muscle mass. So it's going to boost the metabolism. And that's going to start if you got a great nutrition plan. And that's always the key. If you yeah. got a solid nutrition foundation, and I love it. Um, Karen, I listened to one of your, um, your podcasts earlier today, and you talk about that's right for you. Yeah. And the jock method is not about we get to the foundation, you choose what's right for you based on some basic fundamentals that I believe is valuable, but it has to be sustainable and something you're going to do. So after that, then the next thing we want to do, obviously, we want to maintain or enhance the bone. And then it goes into all the specialties. Okay, we need core strength, we need balance, stability, hip mobility, we need all of these different things. So if a, a 20 year old walked into the gym, we say, okay, we need to move, we need to get a couple of things done, we're going to, you know, do some sit ups, crunches, very general can get a lot of results, get on, a, you know, you see cardio, knock it out a couple of times, we're going to do some kettlebell swings and be out. Um, but with the super women, when we come in, we get to be targeted the same way we would of an elite athlete who I need you to be able to explode off your left foot and pendulum this way and be able to touch the cone and get out and get up the field or get up the court. It's the same balance we need. So we make sure if your keys are falling off the table, you can lean over and grab them. And now yeah. we don't have a fall with the hip break or with because we've actually focused on. So we do a lot of band work to make sure we're stabilizing the hips and creating some deeper stability muscle hip strengthening. Um, the number one thing, and there was a great research article and the super women I work with, they're like, great. Yeah, I'm always in the research. I love it. And yeah, I know, same. <laughs> Karen, you say that too, right? You like always in the, in the data, because that gives us a solid foundation. Progressive overload, but the principle of overload, in my experience so far with all of the women I have worked with is the most misunderstood concept to maintain and build the muscle, which is also going to maintain and build that bone density. Understanding the level of perceived exertion is the game changer of um, understanding what it takes to actually build. Once we have the right movements, what do I have to do to get the result? We know the hormones are shifting and there's going to be, you know, we, everything we get to do, we get to do even at a greater level because of what's happening with that hormone profile, as you said. Um, and so there was a great article, a research article where they lined up a cohort of women and they coached them to their one rep maximum perceived exertion. Great. So, you know, that's a challenging effort you can do for one time. They brought the cohort back and they said, okay, now you're going to select your weight. Um, so you're going to have self-selection and you match. So they took a perceived exertion. So after they gave a score, when they hit that one rep and they gave a score, let's say a 10 out of 10, that was everything I had. They brought the women back and they let themselves select. Now this is recreational women, 40 or over that's training an average in that cohort, I believe was 51 that are training at least three days a week vigorously. So these are some trained athletes. They selected 57% of their 100 rep, uh, one rep max, maximum effort that they registered when they were with the actual um, instructor, 57% out of that 100. 
So what that means is in their mind, when they hit 57% of what their body could do, they thought they were at 100%. Oh. Think about the yeah. level now. And so what happened and what came out of the secondary of that study, it takes you getting to 70% of your perceived exertion before your body starts to actively, consistently build muscle. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so we have to go beyond, and women were, were basically underestimating themselves. Yes. Wow. Very much Sig so. Very Significantly. much so. Yes. Significantly. And so we have to get to that, and not even to get to the one, but to get to the 70% where we're really going to see the muscle response in yeah. the body. And so, and it, it was when I was group coaching, at, it was, it, you speak of Ellen Latham, founder of Orange Theory. I had a chance to, to meet with her. And the first time I said, how do we explain how as a coach, because this is something as a group fitness instructor, do we get across to the mass of the room? You have, excuse me, you have more in you. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and so that is the number one thing. Once we get the foundation and we have the blueprint, but I would say if I left anything from my expertise, it would be no with excellent form that you have more in you. Um, understand start to challenge and understand that perceived exertion because that once the hormonal profile is in place and the nutrition that's the missing piece to really get your muscle to respond wow and what do you think like did, was there a test done on men and it, what their perceived exertion was it, i i don't worry about them <laughs> no I, I mean i just would be curious because i bet you it was far more than the woman unfortunately like i just think that strength wise, we probably underestimate ourselves like muscle strength wise. Yes. And so, and this is one of the things, uh, well, my history comes from this is being a professional athlete. Right. And so in everything we did, I learned, and even, and I'll say this, even through my journey as a trainer, it'll, the, the men's threshold will be higher, but they still don't understand how much volume they have inside of their bodies for effort because the brain is a safety mechanism and it's going to tell you bing bing put that down it's heavy it's burning you know right. you can't do it <laughs> right but it's going to do that and um so part of uh my certification is uh i'm an unbeatable mind uh cert for certified coach so this was a certification it's a personal growth um and life mastery program made by mark divine um who's a former navy seal commander kind of all of those movies you see about navy seals he's yes. that guy okay <laughs> uh, and so they have the 40 percent rule where they say when you think you've reached 40 percent, now this is where it is this what sparked me to want to start to find the data behind it Mm -hmm. And they say, when you think you reach for your, your maximum effort, you have about 40% left in you. Wow. And so, and they call it the 40% rule on the seals. Um, but in, when we go back to what we're having a conversation about now, the data says that we get to about 57% and fit, perceive that we're at our maximum exertion because that's where the brain kicks in and starts to say, and really what it's triggering is you're in a very uncomfortable zone. Yeah. And that's the zone we have to be in to create the stimulus in the body to say, because the body going to get the feedback, that's very uncomfortable, cue the muscle so we can get back to comfort. And that's part of that response uh, at the physiological level, the body wants to keep you alive. So if we're lifting heavy, we're going to retain more muscle, it's just, or we're going to build it if necessary, as we have the things in place to do it efficiently and effectively. Oh my gosh. I'm going to think of exactly what you just said. Next time I'm working out, <laughs> next, yes. time I'm gonna, next time I'm lifting my weights going, yeah, that's enough. I'm going to be like, actually, no, Joe would tell me right now that I've got 40% more in or more than that in my body to go 43% more. <laughs> yes. And, and so one of the things behind that too is, and I always say this, yeah, because it's, it's the fear, right? Well, I don't want to get hurt and I want to make sure it's always with excellent form. Uh, you know, it's doing a thing, right? Making sure, right? That safety, but when, and the ladies joke, because they'll come in and, and usually when I'm working with some of my athletes, they have a history uh, of performance and they'll, you know, they'll have a heart rate monitor on, um, giving us some feedback live in the workout. And they're like, my heart after a set of squats, my heart's as fast as it would be going if I just did a minute sprint. Um, and it's the feedback of that your body is working. And it may not be that high, but they just never understood that they could have that level of response inside of a resistance training movement. 
when you really are challenging that higher level of effort. Your women must feel very empowered, I would think, when they oh, work with, right? <laughs> they're the super women. They're the super women, yeah. And, and and all are. And I say that's all are because, you know, across the 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 whole spectrum, um, there's so many. And like you said, whether you still got, you know, the guy hanging around or you got the kids still in the house, there's so many things that um, you're executing. And, and really, I saw my mom as that. She was a superwoman who never found. I'm the fitness answer for the fit, super women. And that's really what, because you in every aspect of the life, like you say, mindset, um, it's that superwoman or that strong um, yeah. woman that's executing it and living in life. So, wow. And I know you put it like you incorporate mindfulness into you, you're not just helping women to train. There's more to it than that. So, what else are you trying to incorporate, and why? So. I am a huge believer um, in, you know, the power of the mind um, and how that that carries the performance, um, how it carries us in life and really being it's the end and the beginning. Um, and we have a saying that mindset over everything. OK, once we even when we step into our training sphere, what is our intention? What is our gratitude? We call it I call, and I call that and now the team call it the canister of creation. So we get clear on our gratitude and then, you know, what's our intention for that hour. But inside of that, so the number one thing that we really preference is metacognition to me is one of the most powerful principles as a human. And that's truly simply thinking about your thinking. And, <laughs> right? Most um, people don't realize they can think about their thinking. <laughs> It's that's a very, very true point. Um, and so metacognition, once again, you'll hear me interline some um, conversation with the unbeatable mind because this principle is all about high performance yeah. um, and what that looks like. But so what happens inside of our training, what all and as the athletes come in to the academy, we always have a set standard. OK, this is our accountability. It's high accountability. If you're in this program, you have some goals that you want to achieve and I am going to be your 11 pit bull behind you that is going to say the only way we're going out is forward um and so um so a lot of times what comes up is those old habits so mm -hmm. we great we got the the nutrition plan we want to do we got the right fitness professional for us you know we got our schedule hammered out and then all of the old patterns that we don't know are playing in the background are sitting there saying these are awesome plans and i can't wait to tear them apart right <laughs> <laughs> And so whether it's, you know, maybe we have a stressful job that triggers us. I just had one of my um, one of my super women. She started with me about six weeks ago and she the first three weeks, she's just always talking about hungry, how hungry she is. We've looked at her caloric, um, you know, ratio where that's at. You know, her body's not giving us any of the cues in terms of hunger that says that it's actually in a, a deeper deprivation that she's experiencing, but she's always wanting a snack. So we really started to have a conversation about, OK, let's talk about your life what's happening she started to notice and we just start gauging the snacking and what was happening how much the the emails come through whatever it may be and now i'm going to the snacking right and it becomes i never realized how much how the comfort i thought i had comfort to be comfortable she would say but i didn't realize it was making me feel hungry and so as she started to change, especially since our experience we have right now with COVID, as she started to shift some things in her life to get higher levels of just mindfulness or space out of the chaos, she started to not notice, I'm not being hungry as much. And so that's just a small sample of how the mindfulness and really being present, because once you start that awesome program that's just right for you, if the triggers and you know, and I've lost a hundred pounds myself. So this is a personal. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> um, you have, which is incredible. Yeah. And so, and I just learned a lot of how the mindfulness things were coming into play in, in my transition, but it's such a small thing that after you have your program, if you have other cues in your life that are also triggering the habits or the eating or the different, along with the process and what's happening in your body physiologically, we get to be aware of that and do our best to address it, um, whether it's through breathing or whatever kind of mindfulness to bring more presence and awareness so that we can make a powerful thinking about our thinking choice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's so true though. And I think that we're always in search of the next best diet, the next supplement, the next fitness program. And 
when something doesn't work, so they join your program, they join my program and they're like, oh yeah, no, this didn't work. I'm, I'm not losing the weight. This is, I keep snacking. I'm not showing up to my workouts. They blame it on the program. And then they just go in search of the next one. And it's like, no, stop. If it, you, it, it's something in here then, it's something in the mind that needs to be worked out, whether that's a limiting belief, whether you're too stressed out and you're ruminating and you're using food as a crux or, or your life is so stressful and busy that you can't have, you don't have the time to work out. So those things need to change, not the program itself. And I think that if we would start to look at that, which is harder, it's more work to look at the thoughts that we're having and be like, oh, I guess I just have to change my thoughts and create new habits. And oh, yeah, that's too much work. <laughs> Well, I, I, and I think you, it, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, it's very valuable. You know, it's like, right. It's mm -hmm. the, the, the pot of gold. It's very valuable work with that said, as you say, whether it's whatever that paradigm is, it's something that if you can get, it may open up a level of access to self, to awareness that just is the un, it's kind of like the, I never knew that was coming. Right. Um, and so I have uh, a super one I've been working with for two years and we had this two days ago, we had a very power conversation and she tends to she created a phenomenal transformation in her time. Um, and she still has the, the role playing of, you know, and I call it the not enoughness, uh, you know, virus, the not enoughness. And it's just like, it's not enough. And I'm chasing that next one. And I've passed my goals by far, but still. Um, and so she said, well, I don't know. I, I feel stuck. Now we just saw amazing results. All of the athletes are DEXA scanned. We can see what happened in the bone. We can see, you know, what happened in the muscle. We, we can see it, um, it qualitatively um, or quantitatively. But with that said, once I said, well, let's start to look at when did you start? Like, where is this coming from? When did you start feeling like this kind of this overriding story of nothing's ever enough? And, and it went into a great, you know, opportunity for her to look within and kind of start to just, and I literally got a message this morning. She was like, wow, I went through and kind of just, I stayed up last night looking at what was happening and this, what we talked about yesterday. And she said, I think I got a huge opportunity to rewrite some stories I wrote about myself when I was really young. And that's at 63. And I can wow. tell you enough how inspiring that is that at this point, the, the journey can just be beginning to Absolutely. discover different levels. So metacognition is to me. Metacognition. Is, I, why have I not ever heard of that term before? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up. Metacognition. Is yes. that brain training basically? You right. once you so it really is. I, I mean, meta is like that, right? The the kind of unseen and co you just really think that the best way is thinking about your thinking. So it's really the state of being aware of the thoughts coming through your mind from an observer's perspective mm -hmm. versus an engaged participant. Right. Yeah. And so it's truly, for instance, me, you know, a, as a youth, it was like, okay, no one loves me, right? That was one of my probably got in trouble one day and then that's the spark. So that started to ride, a, 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 you know, be a, a, a writing song or a record in my mind. And it went all the way up through all of my college days and all of this time that this thing in the back of my head, anything that happened, that was like the final record. See, no one cares about you. And not until I started to look at that record instead of listen to it, Right. That was I able to say, no, something happened that in that moment you didn't feel that you were loved. Yeah. yeah. But there's plenty of people around you who care. Yeah. Yeah. And, and did you not go through your whole life up until that point finding truth to it? Like you would like attract it into your life to verify that, see, ah, no, I'm not loved. See, I just proved that because that person just did that to me. It was, uh, yes, my, it was, I had, uh, you know, a microscope out, like looking for, oh, see, see, I did something three weeks ago and you didn't do it today because you don't love me. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And find so the it, proof. you find the proof and, and that's, it, that's such a power that what you just said is so powerful. You find the proof. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and all it is, is a change in perception sometimes that's it. And that's being aware of your thoughts, but also going, I could either take this as I'm not lovable 
Or I can take this as that person is not good enough for me, or, you know, I am better than that, or I need to attract somebody that's going to treat me better and, and learn from it in a really positive way. So it's just, it can be so simple as changing the perception. And like your lady that was coming into you that couldn't see all of the good that's happened. I get that all the time. These ladies that will be like, well, I've lost, I only lost 15 pounds to begin with. And I'm like, okay, but what else has happened in the last three months? Well, my hot flashes are gone. I don't have any more anxiety. I'm sleeping. I feel really good. I've got my energy back. And I'm like, um, oh yeah. And I'm off all my medication. Like, that is so amazing. So quit looking at the number on the scale and give yourself a pat on the back for all of these amazing transformations that have happened, you know? And it's just so funny that what we do, eh? we pick it out, pick out all the little small little things that we haven't accomplished instead of looking at what we have. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think that's such a huge key you said is because we're looking for that confirmation, you know, mm -hmm. and, I think there's so many powerful women who start their journey and they found something that may not be their in answer. And that's what I tell all, I may just be, as you come into the academy, I may just be a stepping stone to what is perfect for you. Yeah. But there's a lot of times that they find and maybe they come to work with you and you're the answer that's going to take them very far to their next step, but it keeps them knowing. And you're the, you're the step that says there's hope. But because that thing is looking, and I call it scale hell, I tell the ladies, stay out of scale hell, get out of there. <laughs> you, you start your day, and that's part of our mindfulness habit. You are not going to start the day stepping on a scale that's just completely took your awareness into what is not working and is throwing you all kind of curveballs at that point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, but when you're looking for confirmation, and, and it, it quickly, and like you said, you could be winning everywhere else. Like, so I... I back them in. You're going to be on this. We're going to do a check-in just to monitor what's happening at our energy and how the transformation decks up for a deeper analysis every 90 days. But then you're going to have your go outfit and you're going to do progress photos. So that way, when you go crazy and you're like swimming through the murk, we're going to yeah. go, okay, but those gold pants fit. So <laughs> those gold pants. <laughs> yeah. At yeah. this point, no matter how you feel about the five pounds, the pants fit better. And so we're making progress. Um, exactly. Yeah. So I, I think you make, that's such a huge point. Yeah. I had a, a lady reach out to me yesterday who I saw in the spring and she said, you know, I, I'm, I'm down to 204 pounds, which is still a lot of weight. Right. But she said, Karen, I haven't fit into this size of clothes in 15 years. Mm. And she's like, I know I have to get down farther, but she said, I'm so happy right now because I haven't felt this good in 15 years. And that's awesome. When so many other women would be like, I'm still overweight and this needs to go faster. Or this isn't good enough. I'm not good enough. And it's like, come on. But yeah, that was so great to hear that. But yeah. So Kate, tell us about what you have to offer, because I was looking through and you've got a different kind of levels of um, programs kind of to fit each kind of person's needs, I think. Yeah, so in the Body Academy, we have uh, different levels. We started our platinum tier, which is really the, the athletes who need a coach in their pocket. You know, it's a very high accountability um, with the nutrition. That's me building. If you're local, um, building a program for you local. If you're remote, building a remote access um, program as well as mindfulness habits. So we really circle the wagon. Um, in terms of having you the accountability and support with the feedback on a day to day basis. And, and that's one of the things we really, um, really gives the program a, a level of depth uh, for those platinum athletes is, you know, as soon as they shift their pattern, if an old habit comes up, there's been so much consistency that I'm able to identify that, highlight that right away and make an adjustment there. Um, and then when the, the programs, you know, really start to move their way down. So some athletes come to me um, and our goal level athletes, they just want the coaching and accountability. And as you know, the coach and, and which is, you do so well um, with this uh, podcast and the information you provide is that there's so many very powerful options. And mm -hmm. I love it. I was listening to you today and you're like, try them all. <laughs> try one, try the other one, be open to, you know, really yeah. see what, right. And, and it's such a awesome conversation because 
it really, and, and there's, of course, there's certain things we need to know. There was a huge um, discovery we made with one of my athletes who was having hot flashes. So, and I'm going to circle back, Karen, because I want to make sure, and a point just came up that I want to talk about training yeah. um, in specific, uh, or specific to uh, our, the super women where we're talking about. Um, but we end up finding out through the, she was char char charting her hot flashes consistently, consistently. So we had them on a time scale. So I was able to go back in the data and we started to, and I started to do research and continue to look through. Um, and there was a great article I found about um, with the hormones that shift in the body and what happens with the blood brain barrier. And, you know, with what happens with hot flashes, with the estrogen declining, it starts to impact that blood brain, um, the sugar levels with the blood brain transition. So part of that firing starts to get interrupted. And they believe that's part of what happens, you know, you know, um, it, during the process. And so we're able to add in, you know, have her with her nutrition, start adding in some more, um, you know, carbs uh, and, you know, from the, the uh, high glycemic carbs so that it sparked it. Um, and then we also had some low glycemic, so it had diminished over time. And for her as an athlete, because every athlete is different, it eliminated. And this was for a woman who was having, you know, five to 10 night sweats at, you know, throughout the night. Okay. So sorry, say that again. You went to high, you gave her high glycemic first and then low glycemic just to see if that's the cause or. Yep. Just oh. to see what would happen. So we, to see what would happen when we started to spark her blood sugar, how fast, with the hot flashes come and go. Yes. And so we, we and, and we just work with her and she's just a great athlete because she was so committed to the program to give us that feedback. Um, and so we found right around two hours when she's had that snack and she was on, you know, every two to three hours, kind of that standard snacking to keep it. And right around, you know, two hours or mark. So she started to see those hot flashes start to spark up. So then we started to in institute that low glycemic that it kind of go up and, but we start her day a little bit higher and then she keep the low. So it just, over time, it kept her blood sugar more balanced and it was phenomenal for her. And so it's, it's just stuff like that, that being at, with that high accountability, you know, as a coach, the more you're accountable, the more we can adjust or support you in navigating through your program. Absolutely. And then so and that goes all the way down to uh, I have a seven day free video course that you can come in and get some basic principles of mindfulness of setting a healthy, powerful day of eating, um, along with some basics 21 exercises that you can incorporate into your fitness right away that's designed for women at this stage of their life. Um, and that's seven days and I always tell you know the athletes that come in, you can repeat it. 21 days or 30 days and then it becomes a 30 day program. Um, but so I, I really just outlined my program and everything I do at JLC. You, you said a great point when you introduced me. It's about giving, you know, from a place of love. And when I say love, it's just a positive energy that makes the grass grow, that makes the sun shine and a smile resonate on our face. Um, and so I really look to just be one of the vessels to just give knowledge because I think there's definitely that uh, energy of uh, mindfulness of hopelessness. Yeah. And there's a lot of answers out there. So it, it, the right program is out there. Yeah. We just need more positivity around this phase in a woman's life. We, there's too much negative and we need to start leaning and watching out for the positive and looking for all the positive things that come with this journey and you are such a beacon of light in all of this. Like, I love you. You're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You're, it's amazing. It's amazing. I, I, I want you to be my coach, Joe. <laughs> You're so great. <laughs> Very inspirational. So I appreciate it a lot. And I know that who's ever listening, you guys can feel it, can't you? You can just feel it coming off of you. Even if you're not watching, I'm sure they'll be able to feel your energy and how positive it is. Um, and what you're doing for women. I think it's great. So thank you very much. And now where can people find you? Let's give all the details. Yes. And I'll tell you, and, and on it, it, when, as I come on here, I really am coming in a place to give. So I, my intention is that there's something you take away. You can find me at www.jockoaching.life. So jocoaching.life is where you can find me. Um, you can find all my programs through there. You can go to the about section. If you go to um, the uh, free giveaway, the, the seven day free course is there for you. And uh, you can find out more information, how to contact me. Um, and over in the blog, there's just always a, a lot of free giveaways, mindfulness handouts. Um, and so 
I, I came from this space to, to just give. And, and so as long as there's a positive energy, like you said, that comes out today, that's truly why I wanted to be here to give to the space because the industry doesn't look uh, at, at women at this stage. And it is such, it is to be what I tell the lady, this is the magic. You went through, you created the humans. If you that was a part of your journey and your yeah. story, they're out. And now you can really have the opportunity to re reclaim, renew, whatever you want to call it, but you can step in. And maybe it's even, maybe it's not a renewal. Maybe you've never taken and, and let yourself be the star of your own show. And so now it's the second act and it is your opportunity to make it the best. So um, it's such a powerful place. And I, and I know the industry is always looking out for everybody. So I don't want to say that it completely shuns, but I, there's definitely an opportunity to make these women here um, at this stage and know that they, you are in a powerful place and we are looking to support you in every way we can. Oh, I love it. That's so fantastic. I'm going to put all his links into the show notes. Um, I'll also link to that free seven day workout. So you guys can go check them out and get on that. I know I'm going to. So, all right, Joe, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you so much. I'm grateful to be here. It has been a pleasure.